I'm thinking about the um, applicability of biblical law and biblical principles in relation to the law in Britain and the way in which the Bible has been subtly um, edged out of the courtroom. A man can swear his oath on, I don't know what kind of um, credentials are required of the document that he presents, but um, I think more or less you can swear your oath on whatever you please. They don't give it really any importance. So swearing on the Bible then is just exposed to be the sham that it is, of course. Because we are instructed, well everybody knows that swearing really isn't allowed. For good reason, really. It's... Um, I think one can speak forcefully in, in one's defence. Um, I would hesitate to to swear something by God, but, but maybe I, maybe I might in, in certain in a certain circumstance. I don't know. I'm sure he'd be okay. Uh, thankfully, my God is a forgiving God. Our God is a forgiving God. And he can tolerate our uh, conceit. And we all have it, you see. This is, this is the key to understanding. That has been the key to my understanding. Just, just the revelation of this conceit. And everybody suffers from it. Um, I really like the um, Castaneda, um, Don Juan, you know, sorcery definition of personality. Uh, Don Juan, when he says that there are just three personalities in considered in sorcery and in the world, that's the, that's the understanding of personality. And um, the first one is a, a very agreeable and perfectly, you know, easy to get along with person who is um, amenable to all and uh, extremely pleasant company. And the only the, the, they have the sole flaw that they cannot function alone. They need to have um, a, somebody to partner with in order to function in the world. That's their flaw. And then there's um, a second group of nasty people, people who are quite vindictive and self-interested and have... Um, a mean nature and that's a very large group of people and then the third group of people is composed of haughty individuals who believe that they have great powers and extreme gifts in the world but in actual fact have nothing of the sort but they have a, a sort of an inflated opinion of everything that they do and everything that they say, but they are just um, uh, missed. And those are the three people, types of people in the world. And when he tells Castaneda, Castaneda is like, no, you know, what he wants to know what group he fits into. Castaneda says he's a mix of all the groups and uh, of course Don Juan laughs his head off and then uh, he's, uh, he says well, you're in the second group it's clear to me you know you are a mean-spirited and nasty person and uh, as as am I he says as am I he said but he also went on to say it's not important you see because your personality is defined um, when you're quite young really. I don't know at what age, but there's not much you can do about that, you see, in a way. That's who you are. And then you have, then you work with it, you see. Um, that's perfectly fine, because all of those personality types have, um, have powers anyway. Um, and the powers might develop differently, but they're just facades, you see. They're, they're really of no importance. They're just um, 
characters on a stage. Um, to describe a man as, as nasty, of course, is unbiblical. I mean, uh, I would never dream of it. Speaking to an, you know, an indiv about an, a recognised or knowable person, I don't think it's a correct term at all that we should be using. Um, but uh, so it's a, it's a very sort of stoic and cynical view, if you like, of the world. But um, it try it it doesn't reach out. It limits emotional involvement with these things and just defines what they are and who we are. And it kind of fits in with the Bible also, of course, which tells us that really you know we have no great worth in ourselves. It doesn't matter whether you're you know. Um, you know, the kind of mean and nasty personality can sometimes be a very um, devout scholar or, or, you know, very intensely focused and all the rest of it. But they remain true to form. And the only way that they can free themselves of it is to is through the practice of sorcery, to understand that the mean and nasty that is in you and the, the haughty and vain that is in me is just an actor. Um, it's the actor that I use on the stage of life, I suppose. Um, or I, it's, it's an actor that I can use. Um, in the practice of sorcery, they, they, they have they use other actors once once you un, once you identify the actor that you've chosen. It, it, I don't know whether I could use other actors. I don't think I'm, you know, that way inclined. But I, I can probably more, um, a little bit more aware of my um, my scripts. So uh, I suppose that might change what I say or when I say nothing, which is quite a rare occasion. But uh, I do recognise the importance of silence. There's a lot of silence amongst people though, in the modern ways. And I find it, I always greet people when I'm walking. And um, from their responses, it's odd to see. Some people seem to be sort of switched off. Um, and I can't tell. I, I think they're in a kind of a trance. I've met, um, well, it's very hard to meet them because they only interact, I think, probably with the people in their very immediate vicinity. Perhaps that's how it works or in their own family. Um, maybe they're people who are frightened of um, catching diseases. Um, I don't know. Um, they... I have wondered about those theories of the being non-player characters walking in the world. And I think it's perfectly reasonable. Um, the, the spirit um, touches everybody, I suppose, but in different ways um, and to different extents, I suppose. I don't know whether the spirit does light up every soul um, I, th I don't think it would be biblical to assume that. I mean, life is given. But the Bible says the wind bloweth where it listeth. That's always been quite a sort of hard to interpret verse, I think. But it does seem to say that, you know, I mean, God's favour really is dispensed at his good will. So again, you know, there's no point really in worrying about that. Um, you know, if you covet God's favour, um, well, I suppose you have to um, earn his goodwill to some extent, to, to any extent in which you possibly can. And so you would earn his goodwill by following his laws and commandments uh, as closely as possible. Um, 
but the primary um, requirement is devotion is that he should guide our lives and he should be our benchmark in every action um, we should kneel before him at every moment of our lives you see this is I think this is a The, the requirement really I, I don't see it as a requirement to you know wear certain types of cotton undergarments or um, you know abstain from certain sexual practices or um, other biblical laws you know I'm quite sure uh, you know I've chosen perhaps two extremes there and you know that's a, something of a um, a trick of rhetoric so you know I should retract it but I mean that there are you know there is a, a very wide variety of laws of course and um, a certain criteria need to be applied uh, in order to establish which ones will should be upheld um, rigorously I mean there is the question of having um, a, a, a very disobedient son uh, stoned to death which is an option in the you know the, the old law and the Bible does tell us that the law shall endure forever so that law cannot pass from the statute books you see um, we we fail by the law at every step this is what we need to understand we cannot keep the law so it is it, it is our it is our nature um, only Jesus Christ could keep the law because he was he is God eternal it would be um, a conceit for us to even attempt really but the law remains and so the law makes us sinners before the throne and sinners who need regular daily <laughs> washing with the blood of the Savior who who loves us that's how I see it <laughs>